Michelle from Brooklyn Tweed. My pronouns are she and her. We are back for another episode of Wooly Goodness. And today I have Liz with me and I will let her introduce herself. <laughs> yes, um, my name is Liz and I am the knitwear coordinator here at Brooklyn Tweed. Um, my pronouns are also she and her. Um, and Kel and I have worked together now for about four and a half years. Um, I actually came on to help Kel out in um, our wholesale department. We both actually worked in wholesale, and now we do completely different things here at Brooklyn Tweed, but it's all in service of love of fiber. So This is true. We are still here doing the, doing the stuff. So what, what do you do now? Because every time I try to tell somebody <laughs> your job title, I'm like, Liz does knit wear some cord something so that's exactly what i do um yeah so technically i am the knitwear coordinator here um uh, the elevator pitch for that though is basically i work with our photography team and do the styling for our photo shoots um, but i also work with our designers and our sample knitters to get um, samples produced for all the new designs coming out that we would then take to the photo shoots and photograph. So I get to see, basically I see a sample through its life cycle of the design selection, yarn selection, color selection, getting it knit, and then putting it on our models and having it photographed. So, and then I hand those images over to you and you do your yeah, fancy marketing things with them. And you send the, you hand the samples over to me so that I can then yes. send them out to our stores for trunk shows and all that good stuff so people can see them in person. What would you say is the most fun thing about your current job? Um, I think probably, I mean, there's so many different fun things, um, you know, getting an email from a designer who we've published, you know, who is really excited because they've just seen their design for the first time, you know, that really makes my heart sore is hearing back from the designers we work with, um, how they feel about, you know, the work we've collaborated on. Um, but just thinking back to recent collections like frames we've done, um, you know, I get to work with our photographers and our models and um, work on the styling for that and, it's really, really fun to try to convey a story and really try to bring forth um, how beautiful these designs are for people. You know, designers entrust us with, with their ideas and their creativity, and it's our job to sort of present it out to people, out to knitters in the world. And um, so it's really, it's really fun to try to find something fresh to say, something new to say, a new way of presenting it. Um, and yeah, I think that's one of the really fun things is being on set and working with the collaborators that we do to try to like really bring alive the designer's vision. Yeah, so that brings up a good point. We are working with outside photographers now for the first time for, was Frames our first? shoot with an outside photographer yes. with Rebecca? Yes, Frame, Frames has been our first. Um, we've now worked with two other photographers since Rebecca, um, both fantastic. Um, some in the studio, some on location, and that's really enjoyable uh, as well just to see someone else's eye. I mean, Jared has been doing this for so long and he could not be better. He is an industry standard, um, but it is really lovely to see um, oftentimes people who are not knitters, um, people who do, you know, more editorial work or even weddings, things like that, to see what they um, want to say about Brooklyn Tweed and knitwear and the designs that we're publishing. Cool. Yeah, I've been really excited to see, see the, photo the photos come out from those shoots to see what, what a new person is bringing. Um, and I think Jared's really enjoying being able to, like, take a step back and be the creative director yes. and just be the creative director for a minute and not 10 other things at the same time. Exactly. I mean, we do all wear a lot of hats here, literally and figuratively at Brooklyn Tweed, but Jared has carried a lot of weight for many years doing a lot of things. And I think it'll free him up to be even more creative. So yeah, I'm excited about that for sure. All right. So what are you knitting today? Um, I am just knitting a shawl um, and it's in Arbor one of my favorite yarns so you know I couldn't 
I can't ever say no to Arbor. It's really great for stitch definition. And as everyone knows, I love cables and textures. So it's one of my go-to yarns. All right, is this your pattern, a pattern yet to be released? What is it's, this? Yeah, what it's is just one pattern? of my, it's just a riff on, it's gonna be a nice triangle shawl because I don't really have a satisfactory triangle shawl in my, my wardrobe at the moment. So. I like a good triangle shawl. Yes. You know, they fell out of, I feel like they fell out of fashion for a little bit, but I like a good big, particularly when it's called out, I like a good big weighty. It's going to be big. <laughs> I'm definitely, yeah, starting at the bottom and who knows what my cast off stitch count will be. We'll see. Excellent. I will look forward to seeing this yes. and seeing it blocking in the office. Yes, I will definitely, the, the office has the best blocking supplies. So we do all of our blocking here. Um, yeah, things dry in, in a heartbeat here. Yes, so. with the magic, the magic trash can. The magic trash can spinner. What is that thing called? <laughs> I think it's called the Panda. Oh, that, yes, the Panda <laughs> Panda portable dryer, I believe is what that's actually called. But we all call it the magic trash can because it looks like a little trash can. What are you knitting, Cal? I am working on a Seasons hat in Peary. This is uh, one of Jared's older patterns. Um, but it's in five colors of Peary, and it's just a nice, basic, classic color work pattern. Um, but I am doing this up for the holidays, so looking forward to seeing how it looks when it's done. But uh, yeah, I've gotten through this first color work chart, so now I am starting the second, and it should be done pretty soon. Got a nice little tubular cast on there. Love a good tubular cast on. But yeah, this Peary is coming up so squishy. I am I'm excited about this. It's really, really soft and lovely. So Cal, you said you're knitting this for the holidays. Are you gifting this? Are you generally someone who likes to knit for other people and give away gifts? Or are you sort of a selfish knitter? Hmm, depends. When I first started learning how to knit, everybody was getting knitted everything. Like people had to tell, they were like, okay, that's enough hand knits. And I was like, what do you mean that's enough hand knits? <laughs> Don't you want my garter stitch scarves? Um, yeah, like the first holiday season when I learned how to knit, I must have knit like 20 garter stitch scarves. Like, cause that's all I knew how to knit was garter stitch scarves. So everyone got one. Um, now I, I often have great, um, you know, great plans that I'm gonna to gift hand knits mm -hmm. to, you know, my whole family for the holidays. And then that doesn't always get done. But you know, if you don't tell people that you're, you know, gifting exactly. them things, then you can just save it for next year and it all works out. Well, then I guess this, um, how do you feel about the sweater curse? Have you encountered the sweater curse in your personal life? I have, I have not. Uh, encountered it in my personal life, not having had the opportunity to invoke the sweater curse. <laughs> um, but I have heard that it is a real thing. And for folks who are not familiar with the sweater curse, it is the, the longstanding belief held by knitters that if you knit a sweater, particularly, because that's a big ticket item for a significant other, uh, that you will break up shortly after gifting them this large piece of knitting. So ha have you ever run into this, this sweater curse? Um, I personally have not run into the sweater curse. I think um, one of the few occasions that I have knit things specifically for another person, I circumvented the sweater curse by um, knitting them a hat but also knitting them a hat before we were actually like technically together. So it's like, I will gift you knitwear before we're officially in a relationship. Oh. So then we can't break up. Very smart, because you've already established the knitwear gifting. Yes, so the knitwear gifting is a baseline. And then, that's right. so that seemed to work pretty well. So yeah, I don't know if I necessarily would, you know, knit a whole sweater for just, you know, a buddy, but you know. Don't count it up. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a, I have a, uh, I think friends are safe. Friends are safe. Yes. I, I have a, I have a dear friend from 
the East Coast who knits me a sweater every year, at least for Christmas. Thank you, Jane. Uh, and I always look forward to getting, getting sweaters. Uh, and we always look forward to seeing them in the office. I know, I, yeah, she often knits me Brooklyn Tweed sweaters. So then I don't have to knit them myself, which is great. Cause I'm like, look, I have a new sweater. Um, I should have worn one. I'll have to do that next time. Next episode, Jane's sweater. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I think hats are safe. I think yes. hats are safe. Hats are always good. I mean, I, you know, I love knitting hats. You can, you know, not get me to say no to knitting a hat. It's true. Knit a hat in a weekend. Fits everybody. Everybody needs a hat. My dad, my dad is a great person to, to knit hats for. Lives in New England. It's cold there, you know, and he's always going to be my dad. Absolutely. Yeah. I need to knit my dad a hat for Christmas. Of course, now I've put it out into the world. Dad, don't watch this episode. <laughs> so if I don't finish your hat, you won't know. <laughs> so then I guess what um, we would all love to know from you is, do you believe in the sweater curse? How do you circumvent the sweater curse? Any gifts you're knitting this holiday? Who for? Um, what's on your needles right now? Mm -hmm.